Hello, and welcome to Real Person Reviews. I'm Sam, and I'm a real person. And uh, before I go through this whole review here, um, I do want to say that I do have a linked version to, um, or a link to the written version of the review uh, down below. And uh, in case you didn't already read the title when you clicked on the video, I'm going to talk to you about Shovel Knight. All right, so um, this came out for like everything it's on it's on uh xbox one it's on ps4 it's on the ps vita um it's on wii u uh the 3ds and uh the version that uh you're going to be seeing the footage for the one that i have uh that i got first and played um because i didn't have a 3ds yet is uh the pc version uh that i have on steam so that link to the review that's a steam review just so you guys know um and this is one of those games where it got like super hype. Like there was a whole Kickstarter for it, and a lot of YouTubers I know either either contributed or they were just super excited and played the demo and were were really pumped about the game. And then they were pumped again, you know, when it came out. Like everybody was talking about this, it was a huge deal, and I figured it was one of those games that yeah, you know, probably be pretty good. But uh, there was, I didn't think there was any way it was going to live up to the hype, and people were just going to kind of forget about it. But this game came out back in 2014, and people are still talking about it. And after playing through the game, uh, it definitely lived up to the hype. One of the very few games that I've ever played that lived up to the hype. So, um, just, you know, off the bat, don't get too discouraged by everyone being so excited about it, because there's a good reason. Um, Shovel Knight is a retro-styled, uh, uh, kind of very close to NES stylistically, uh, 2D platformer, where um, it's kind of like a mix between the gameplay of stuff like, uh, at least to me, it feels a lot like Mega Man and DuckTales. Um, and I'm sure you can see hints of other games in there. There's like an overworld thing, uh, like Super Mario Bros. 3. There's stuff like that out there. You know, you can um, you'll find probably lots of similarities to other games because clearly, you know, um, it's very clear that the people who made this game were very inspired um, <laughs> by those old games. Um, and uh, just aesthetically, it looks wonderful. And the, the music in this is, this is great. The soundtrack is amazing. Some of the... It's just, it's just great. And uh, like every time I hear that title theme start up, I'm just I'm super pumped to play the game. Um, so... Uh, uh, there's there's kind of like a story going on with uh, basically that uh, your character Shovel Knight and uh, Shield Knight um, used to you know go around and I believe they were fighting people and villains and whatnot and then uh, you know Shield Knight disappeared and and, and was you know presumed dead so uh, you know Shovel Knight got really depressed and kind of stopped fighting uh, and everything because his partner was gone. And then there, all of a sudden there is this new, uh, the Order of No Quarter um, came up and started, you know, taking over and they were trying to take over the world or whatever, I guess. So Shovel Knight decided it's time to get back in action. And then you're going and trying to defeat all of these different bosses of the Order of No Quarter to finally get to the, the head of them, which is the Enchantress. That's basically the, the plot. So you do that by going around in levels. Um, you can select the levels from the overworld um, to play. Um, they will start you off in an introductory stage. You can kind of get the used, like get used to the mechanics, which you know you can uh, run around and uh, there's no like hold a button to run or anything. You just kind of move, um, and you're not super fast because you're uh, you know you're you're a knight with a bunch of armor on, so you're not going to be you know hauling ass through there. But you, uh, you know you move a decent pace. The controls are really tight. Um, you use a shovel, because you're Shovel Knight, and you should use a shovel like, you know, you can uh, slash enemies with a shovel, um, and uh, if you hit down while you're in the air, you can um, uh, hold your shovel underneath you, and it'll let you pogo off of uh, enemies and some obstacles. Um, you can dig up dirt and, like, these dirt and sand blocks and stuff. Uh, as well that are around the stages and uh, you can use it to find secrets like you know breaking open walls and stuff and you can hit back some projectiles with the shovel so there's a lot of uh, utility with that shovel it's pretty cool um you'll find a lot of like little gems and stuff to collect so you can get gold throughout the levels which you can use later uh because there's also like on the overworld there's a bunch of different levels and stuff but there's also uh, a few like towns you can go to 
And in those towns, there's stuff for you to buy, like upgrades and things. So you can get um, the secondary items, which you, you know, hit up and attack to use those. Um, kind of like Castlevania. Uh, and they use magic, but you have to, you know, find more magic to refill your magic if you're running out. And uh, you'll get those throughout the stages as they're hidden inside of the stages. Uh, uh, as well as some just being available uh, in the towns. Uh, you can also get some armor in the game, usually with pros and cons to the armors. Um, so that's something you have to kind of consider. Like, you want to buy these armors and get the you know pros and cons of them. Like, can you work with this? And it's just having different play styles. Like some some of these relics that you're getting, which are the secondary items, those like will work better with certain like armors. And just depending on the way you want to play, there's there's some availability for different kinds of play styles. And I feel like it's very uh, Mega Man asking that you pick a level, and you already know, you know, get an idea of what the level's going to be, and you know who the boss is going to be when you select the stage. So you go through their stage, and then you get to the end, and then in the end spot you fight a boss, and like that's that's it. You know, it's kind of like you know, and they're all knights. They're all some kind of theme of knights as well, which is is pretty fun. There's also some random encounters on the map that you can uh, do, where like you know, oh, one of these guys popped up on the map. So, like, and they're walking around and stuff, just like in Super Mario Bros. 3. So you can go and, like, collide with them, and then you can fight them. Also, with those relics, those uh, items that you get, you can, uh, there are some stages that you need those that are on the map. Um, special stages, where, uh, you'll, you'll need those to get through them, and they're kind of, so they're basically like challenge stages designed specifically around, you know, manipulating that, um, that relic. So you really get a feel for how to use the relic also. Um... It's really cool, and and the, there are checkpoints in each of the levels. You can destroy them, which will net you some gold. Um, but uh, you know, if you do, then if you die, you have to go back further. So um, you know, it's kind of like a risk versus reward thing. Um, and you know, there's just there's a lot of levels. They're really fun. They do ramp up in difficulty. Um, and again, like you know, like visually, it's wonderful. Music is is great. And so it's just all around a really satisfying experience to play the game. Um, and there's even some NPCs and stuff, you know, in the towns to talk to that are interesting, you know, and have some weird jokes with them and, and everything. is just, you know, there, there's there's some nice humor in there that, that comes out really well, I think. Um, and, uh, I mean, it's it's just... There's not much more to say, I guess, other than this, it's awesome. Um... I do, I guess I have a few little complaints with it, I, I suppose, in terms of some of the design stuff. Um, some of my complaints, I think, are that, uh, uh, well, for one thing, there's no co-op, but I hear that that's uh, going to be coming in a later, like, installment, or there's going to be something where you can do a co-op, I, I guess, later on. So maybe that's not going to be an issue. I don't know if that's coming to the PC or not, or if that's just coming to, like, uh, you know, the Nintendo versions. Um... Because, yeah, you know, this, this this game has been so big that there's also... Nintendo is making an amiibo of it. They're making an amiibo of a third-party indie game. Uh, that's pretty impressive. And I believe the amiibo is going to have the co-op mode as part of uh, part of the things that unlocks. I'm not sure, but I think that's the way it's going to work. We'll see uh, if the other versions get it or not, I guess. Um, and... Uh, so that would have been nice to have that. I don't know if you would have how it would work necessarily, or if you would have you know them both be the same, you know, both be shovel knights, or if it would be like one of you would play a shovel knight and one of you would play a shield knight somehow. I I don't know how it would work, but um, it'd be it'd be nice to have it, I guess. Uh, even though I probably wouldn't necessarily even use it, I might, and I wouldn't mind doing that. I think that would be fun. So that would be cool. Um, the uh. This is really a nitpick, I guess, but, like, while this is does a really good job, like, looking and feeling like an NES game, like, a lot, and I think a lot of people who liked, you know, old NES games like Mega Man and, and DuckTales and that stuff, people who like these old NES games are going to look at it and, like, they're going to probably like that a lot, but some of the stuff, like the controls, you wouldn't be able to do with an NES controller and a lot of, like, a lot of the visual stuff probably wouldn't work. It's probably a lot bigger than you would be able to put on an NES cart. Um, and that's super nitpicky to think of that, and it's not really an issue, but it is just something to think about, like, um, you know, it's it's not something that could have been on the NES. Um, it would have to be downscaled a lot, I think, if that were the case. Nevertheless, it ha still has that feel so much that, really, that gets overridden anyway, so, like, it's not, it's not even really a complaint or an issue, but it is something to note, I guess. Um, 
There are a couple things, I think, with the design, though, um, are like... Well, you get these two uh, chalices that you can get filled up, and um, basically they give you, like, full life and full magic. Plus you get this uh, relic that is the phase locket. And if you use that, you will become invulnerable for a few seconds, like five seconds or something. Um, so you can't take any damage during that, and or get knocked back or anything. So it, it's pretty pretty useful. It doesn't use up tons of magic. So basically, um, most of the boss fights become super easy if you abuse that. Um, and even a lot of the other like platforming sessions can get, you know, kind of made made pretty easy with that. Just because you're like, okay, well, if something is going to kill me. I'm going to turn this thing on so I don't get killed. And you can take out bosses if you're running low on magic and, you know, or you're running low on health, you can use that chalice and it'll refill both your magic and your health completely. So basically, yeah, it's almost like having three lives at once when you're fighting with those, and it's pretty hard for you to lose like that. Um, unless there's some kind of instant death stuff. So, I mean, maybe that could have been adjusted because that was a little, a little cheap, I guess. Um, and, uh... I don't know, I think those are probably only my main, like, you know, my, my main uh, complaint for that is that uh, that was, the, the phase lock it, in general is just overpowered, and it's, it's I don't know. It, you can you can play harder, there's like a new, there's new game plus that you can play, which will be more difficult, um, and, you know, there's tons of achievements and stuff, and uh, if, I, I guess, again, like, I don't give a shit about achievements, but uh, if you're into those, you might like those. Those are the only reasons you'd want to go destroying the checkpoints, though. I'd really rather you not be able to destroy them. I don't think I ever did. I may have accidentally destroyed uh, a couple before I really understood that you could destroy them. But, uh, you know, you can destroy them. And uh, then if you die, you go all the way back um, to the either the last checkpoint that you didn't destroy, or if you destroyed all of them in that level, you're going back to the very beginning of the level. And, uh, that's a long way to go if you're trying to just get good at one little spot, so, I don't know. Uh, it's not necessarily a great reward. Another thing is, like, gold, I guess, also, is that I was, like, maybe halfway through the, the game, and I had bought basically everything, pretty much, and then I was just stockpiling a bunch of gold that I didn't really even need. Um, and some of the armors, it's kind of nice, I guess, that some of them have pros and cons to them, but I would really, like... Uh, prefer if there was, um, like, I don't know. There's also shovel upgrades, too, but, like, uh, in that, in that same area, but, like, I would have preferred if, like, all of the armors would have just had, like, some kind of bonus to them. So I really didn't pick anything that would have some kind of, uh, uh, negative aspect to it, because I thought that was, like, gonna, I don't want to be set back, I just want to be set forward. Um, I just want to be pushed forward if I'm gonna buy one of these, but maybe that's just me. Um, I, I just, you know, is his thing. Uh, overall, though, it's, it's Shovel Knight it was, it was awesome, and it was it was just this experience and playing through uh, the Shovel Knight. You know, the whole campaign. It's all continuous. It saves between everything, and and uh, you know, it's, it's just a good time. Like if you die, there's a mechanic where you will drop some of your gold, but you can get it back, um, which I think is cool. Where it's like, oh, you know, <laughs> like I'm dead. But I've dropped these bags of gold, and it's like, if you come back, and you can recollect that gold that you dropped. If you die again before collecting those, those bags are disappeared, and uh, you're going to drop more gold. So, it is kind of an incentive to keep trying to, you know, not die, because, you know, you can restart as many times as you want, but you might keep losing gold. Then again, your gold is cumulative, so you can just kind of, if you wanted to, you could just grind on an easier stage. Just continually play through that stage to get enough gold to buy everything, so it's not really a big deal at all, I guess. Um, so I kind of, I kind of wish that was, you know, there's a little more weight to that, but whatever. Um, just overall, it's it's just wonderful, like the way it looks, the way it feels, and the way it sounds. Just like playing that game is just is just a, a, a wonderful experience, and it's only fifteen bucks, and it's just it's crazy. And what's crazier yet is that they've also uh, added in uh, another, a whole other campaign now. Because um, if I did this a while ago, you know, it wouldn't, have, it wouldn't have had that to talk about. But now this has been added. Uh, no extra charge. It's not a paid DLC thing. It's just an update to the game um, that uh, basically just adds uh, an entirely new campaign. 
and it was part of their uh, the Kickstarter's uh, stretch goals, I guess, uh, because they made so much money, and they, they they're adding this in for free, so now everyone has this. And um, I wanted to do a separate section because I kind of have a lot to say about that too. So sorry if this video is a little long, but now I want to talk to you about Plague of Shadows. Now, Plague of Shadows is is the the other part. Uh, the new campaign where you play as Plague Knight, one of the bosses from the Shovel Knight campaign. Um, and he plays way differently. Um, uh, 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 you see, the thing is, like, you can, like, double jump, and you can hold your attack button to do a charge jump, which uh, sends you pretty high up into the air while doing some kind of damaging effect from the explosion of your jump as well. Um, so you can essentially you can make uh, three jumps at any uh, you know any given time when you're going off the ground. Um, you also attack with uh, bombs, and um, you know so you're like throwing bombs at a certain range, and um, you know you would think because of all these jumps and all these bombs and stuff, it would be like a lot easier to uh, get through stages, um, especially considering that the stages you go through are the same ones from the Shovel Knight campaign. But these levels have been modified uh, to be more challenging and fit the play style of Plague Knight, so, you know, it's it's still difficult. And you can kind of find ways around stuff. You can find ways to kill enemies from really far away. You can find ways to jump around things. Um, but to try and counteract that, um, they put in these uh, cipher coins, which are little coins floating around in the levels, and there's, you know, there, there, there's uh, only, like, so many of them per level, and you get, like, a counter to see how many there are. Um... And, uh, so you gotta go and, like, hunt for those, which helps you explore more as well, but also makes you take more dangerous routes because, you know, like, yeah, you could just kind of fly over everything really safely and attack enemies from really far away and stuff, but if you want to go get these items, you're gonna have to take those risks and go and try to grab those coins. Um, and I, I think that that was a really good way to kind of, like, challenge you, and then you can trade in those cipher coins to unlock, uh, extra upgrades. Um, the upgrades you get for, uh, Plague Knight his gear that you get basically you usually be buying um you can buy different charge jumps so there's different effects when you do your jump um such as like make sh like shooting a projectile when you jump or you know doing a kind of jump that'll tear through enemies when you do it uh, or like a floaty jump there's a like, there's like a bunch of different like jumps and then there's a lot of different ways to customize your bomb and there's three categories you can customize the fuse which is you know when it explodes um, you can customize the casing which is uh how you uh throw the bomb and uh you can customize the powder which uh, determines what kind of explosion it will have and also will determine the number of bombs that you can throw so like it, it's a pretty cool thing to try and experiment with all the different combinations of those and different combinations are good for different you know enemies and sections um and uh even though again like there are the same bosses uh they're like all the same bosses except that um you can uh <laughs> you, you 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 need a much different strategy because plague knight plays entirely differently <laughs> than a uh, shovel knight does so you really have to like figure out what you're doing you also get different kinds of relics uh with, with uh plague knight because he has all these um like you basically you find the relics that uh Shovel Knight would get, and then you trade them to Chester, um, the guy who you know usually deals with all the relic stuff, and he'll give you some kind of relic that you could actually use that he says is more interesting, and uh, they actually kind of are. Um, so there's some pretty cool ones there, and there's nothing super like overpowered about that either. Most of those do feel really balanced, and I, I think while in general um, it's more challenging to play as Plague Knight, it's uh, also a bit more like rewarding. And it's, it's, in a way, it's, while it's more loose in how you can go about situations, it can also be a lot more awkward and more difficult trying to figure out the exact ways to do it. There's a lot more freedom in it, so it's, it's very, it's a very, very interesting campaign that does a lot to really keep it different and diversify it. You also get i in this one, but instead of, you know, being a thing you can hold with you and drink whenever, like in Shovel Knight's campaign, in here, basically, it's just like changing your armor or your robe or whatever, your cloak. And, um, again, there's pros and cons to most of those, but, um, you know, th th those are, uh, those are a thing you can get as well to kind of, like, you know, alter your play style to, you know, try to fit it to how you want to do things. So it's, 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 it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. I also like that there are some new areas in these levels. While there's redesigned areas and some areas are the same as before, there's also it's like totally new areas in a lot of these stages, which is cool because it makes those worlds feel a little bit bigger, 
and um, you get different interactions with, you know, the, all the characters and stuff. And uh, the basic story, which I probably should have said way before, but the basic story is that um, Plague Knight uh, is uh, he's trying to make a girl fall in love with him, and in order to do so, he's trying to create the ultimate potion uh, that will that will make her fall in love with him. And uh, that's mostly what you're going through in the campaign, is trying to defeat these different uh, the bosses from the Order of No Quarter to get their essence. Um, and you need all their essences in order to create the potion. So that, that was why you're doing all of this stuff. Um, and it's just... It's got some really cool, like, extra set pieces and, uh, you know, there's extra, like, dialogue and stuff, too. And with with that and all the different, like, varied gameplay, it's just, it's it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, even with all the reuse and stuff, it feels super fresh. Um, and, uh, I, I don't know, it's, it, it is very good. I do, I think, have, I've, I have a few more complaints with this campaign, though. Um, uh, like, for instance, one of the things I don't like is that, um, you know, it, it, like I said, it's, it's, they've added new areas and have altered a lot of areas, but still it does feel a little, just, just a little bit lazy that they've decided to kind of just like, okay, you're going to do all the same levels over again. Um, there are new challenge changes for the different, like, relics that you get in the game, which I appreciate, but they're, again, in, like, you know, I guess I'll let those, I'd let those go more, but, like, it, it does feel a little samey that they reused it, and, like, the boss fights are exactly the same, so... Basically exactly the same aside from, like, one boss and the final boss are different. So there's that. Um, so that's interesting. Um, and, uh, I, uh, like, it, I do think it's a little awkward to control um, Plague Knight. Um, it's not necessarily bad, but it is really, really difficult to get used to. You'll definitely want to have played Shovel Knight before, um, in the, with the Shovel Knight campaign first, because... Um, you want to get a feel for how things work in the game and how the enemies are going to move and everything before you go jumping in as Plague Knight and try to figure out how he works. With all the crazy different kinds of bombs you can use and everything. And while you can use all the bombs and, like, fly over stuff and, like, kind of... Not necessarily, like, cheat your way through the level, but kind of, you know, like, bypass a lot of obstacles without much of a challenge, um... The, the downside to a lot of that is that you'll have to... there's In this game, even if you're just playing, like, normally, oftentimes you'll have to be, like, switching out to different types of, like, uh, bombs and, like, you know, the powder and the fuse and the, and the casing and stuff. Because I used the lob casing a lot, but I also had to switch to the bounce casing, like, many times just to blow up things under me to progress through the level. And it's kind of annoying to have to keep, like, going and, like, doing a thing... Trying really hard to do a thing and then stopping and switching all your gear out once you do the thing so you can do the next thing and then stopping and switching switching it out again, it can be a little tedious. Um, I, 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 I was really disappointed with the Cypher coin things too. That's one where I was just, I, I, I was pretty, uh, I was pretty upset just because you collect like half of the Cypher coins and then you unlock all the stuff that you can buy. And then it's like, oh, well, maybe you can do something if you collect all of them. Anyways, so of course you're supposed to collect all of them, you know, like, you're like, I've, I've got to now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get something awesome. And, uh, I'd say this is a spoiler, but I'd rather you know and see if it's what you want to get rather than just, you know, do it and then, you know, getting it and seeing what it is. And the reason I'm sp gonna spoil this is because, um, instead of getting something awesome for getting all of the cipher coins, you get this weird, uh, mysterious chalice thing. And it's like, I wonder if anyone knows more about it. So you take it to the Trowpool King, who knows about chalices, of course. And then he gives you this brand new icor, which gives you, like, this armor that continually changes colors and constantly, uh, changes, um, your, your, your jump type, your item, your, uh, your bomb, and all the attributes of your bomb, the casing, the fuse, and the powder. It constantly changes all of those. There's a constant randomization of those things. So you're never really, like, stuck with anything that you're using. And I guess, like, the, the one, uh, thing that's, like, different is that certain bomb types, like, it would only let you throw, like, one or two bombs, and they'll let you throw more bombs while it's on with this, uh, with this, uh, cloak on. But if you can't pick what it is or when it's, uh, active... And if it's constantly changing anyways, you can't really use it. It's not a useful item. It's just there to create a uh, difficulty. Not a challenge, mind you, because a challenge indicates that it's something to do with skill. 
um, it's difficult because it constantly changes your shit. So if you want to have a lot of difficulty or just fuck around for like five minutes, yeah, it's fine. Otherwise, it's not worth your time to really get other than that I guess it's fun to collect the cypher coins. And it's just like, it, I wish you would have got something that was just outright good for all of your work rather than just giving you... I would even prefer if they just gave you a, a different like looking one that was just... There was no stat boost at all, and it just looked nice. I would have even just preferred that over this random thing, because this thing actually is going to make you uh, do much worse, mu much more often than it's going to come in handy and give you a great combination that you could have already come up with yourself. So, um, I don't know, I just, I was really, I was really pissed off with that one. That, that just didn't make any sense to have that. Uh, but uh, overall, Plague of Shadows campaign was, was still pretty great. It was a lot tougher. It took me a lot longer to complete it. Um, but I did get through it. Um, and I, I died more. Uh, but I did get through it, and it was fun. And it's a, it's, I think it's a good way to play more of Shovel Knight, you know, with, like, a different spin, like, a different twist. And uh, and to, you know, still be in that world with the great visuals and and, and the music and the and the fun dialogue. And, and there's just, like, uh, you know, cause it's, it's just a really, really fun time. If you like Shovel Knight... Um, you're gonna like the Plague of Shadows campaign, probably. You know, it's very, very good odds because it was, it was, it's great. And, you know, you get it with the game. It's just part of it. You don't have to pay extra, so why not? They could have easily just taken this and, like, you know, packaged all that stuff up, you know, even with those same assets and everything, and released it as its own game and said, here, here's another game, Plague of Shadows, 15 bucks. But no, they they didn't. They they um they just put it on like they promised they were gonna do, and that's awesome. Um, and like honestly, like getting Shovel Knight now would be like great because now you're getting both of those. And I'm just I'm so glad that this wasn't just like a cheap like let's just toss this together. Like they actually worked on this really hard, and it actually ends up being really interesting and fun. So that's everything I have to say about Shovel Knight. I think. Um, I can't hold it up because it's the PC version I have. Um, it's it's just it's great. It's it's insane that this is still like fifteen bucks. Like this whole thing, like I guess because it was an indie title, I kind of had to start there, and then we're gonna raise the price. But fifteen bucks for all of the Shovel Knight campaign, and then for the additional um, uh, Plague of Shadows campaign, you're getting two campaigns. Uh, just for 15 bucks, even when the first one was already a great value at 15 bucks. Um, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable, and this is a huge hit, and I can definitely see why. Um, I hear they're coming out with a physical copy of it. I'm not sure if that's necessarily true or not. I'm pretty sure that was a real thing, though, and I think that might be coming soon if it is. Um, you can look up and double check if that's still happening, I guess. Uh, I could have before I started the video, but whoops! Um... <laughs> But if it comes out for 3DS and like a physical copy, I'll most likely get it. I think you'll just have to download extra stuff uh, if you want to get extra campaigns. Because I believe they're working on a few more campaigns as well. Like there's like, I think like two, maybe three more campaigns they're working on. I'm not sure though. Um, again, like I don't know if that was all set and like in stone or if they were still working with stuff. But I believe there are going to be more campaigns added, and I'm not sure if they're going to be free or not. But even if they aren't, it'd probably be worth paying for getting those. But I think they're still going to be free as part of the stretch goals um, because they made a lot of money. So <laughs> definitely, definitely, if you're thinking about getting the game, get it. Um, it's also like achievements are built into it. It's not just like you know, Steam achievements. There's actually, like, achievements built into the game, so whatever version you get, you can do achievements. And then there are also challenges, um, like, so, and both, both, uh, so there's those, those two campaigns. Each one has a new game plus. Um, and then there's achievements, there are challenges for both Shield Knight and for Plague Knight, um, which are little, like, mini things that are designed just to be really tough and for you to work on your specific skills to try and complete. I didn't care for those, but that's just me. I definitely understand where people will care about those and achievements. So if you're into that stuff, that's, that's interesting. You know, there's an amiibo for sh uh, Shovel Knight that's either already out or it's coming out. I think it might already be out. Um, and uh, it's just, it's a great, it's a great game. There's a reason why people are going so crazy for it. Um, it's there's, there's a lot of content there. There's a lot of great work, and it's just it's a, everything that just comes together like a great gameplay and a beautiful package. And uh, 
it's something that it's crazy that we're still talking about this and it's still being worked on even though this came out like a year ago and is basically you know hopefully uh, it's going to be you know an ongoing thing where they're going to work on this until they finish all the stuff they're going to do and it's all great quality i have you know real high hopes for that and any future projects that yacht club games is going to do looks good so you know in the comments um leave whatever the fuck you want i guess because Shovel Knight's awesome, you're not going to change my mind about that. So, I don't know, which version do you have? Uh, would you get, like, a physical version? Um, and, uh, you know, because they're, you know, like... It maybe tell me about, like, the exclusive content. I've heard there's stuff, like... I think the co-op thing might be a Nintendo exclusive thing that's coming. I'm not sure if that's true, but I think it is. Or it's, like, uh, I know the PS4 has, like, you fight Kratos. There's, like, a Kratos boss battle. And there's, like, a Battletoads uh, battle in uh, the, the Xbox One version. So I don't think the PC version got a specific thing or not yet. I, I don't know if that's a thing that's going to happen or not. But just tell me about that stuff and whatever, whatever you want in the comments, you know. Because you guys typically don't anyways. But I really just wanted to talk about this because this is, like, great... And it's, it's like my second favorite game on Steam. I should really just get it on 3DS because I'm sure I'll love it on there too. Um, it just, it's still, it's really, it's getting really close to just overtaking my, 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 my Steam game's favorite list there. It's, 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 it's really, it's taking swings at Rogue Legacy and Rogue Legacy's just taking it. It's just taking it. So which one do you, maybe that in the comments. Which one do you like better, Rogue Legacy or, or uh, Shovel Knight? But, um. I think I talked way too long. I think, well, how long is this video? Let me look at the timer, so it looks weird. Yeah, it was really too way too long for me to be talking about that, but <laughs> it was two huge campaigns, you know, basically almost like reviewing two games, so I, I wanted to just get it all out there, and hopefully it wasn't too rambly and all over the place, and hopefully you guys liked it. Again, if you want to look at my review uh, on Steam, it's linked down in the description, and, um, you, know, you know, Halloween's coming up, Christmas is around the corner. It's bound to go on sale, right? Maybe. I think I saw it on sale once. So it, it could go on sale as if it wasn't a great value already. I don't know. Just get it. Really, 15 bucks for this is not... It's, it's great. It's a good deal. Go buy it. Um, probably one of the best games I've ever played. So, uh, I'm Sam. I'm a real person. That was a review. And I am going to shut the fuck up.